Good afternoon. We'll now start the pep talk. I'd like to welcome everybody to this pep talk. Please mute yourself, but always show your video picture. Please sign in your name, your Facebook account, or email address in the chat box. Please include the names of, of your companions attending with you. Use the chat box to ask questions and make comments while the pep talk is on. There will be group pictures at the start and end of the pep talk. As a reminder, please take the online learning comm evaluation test exercise or OLETE for mastery of learning and have a perfect score to get a certificate. The link has been placed in the chat box as well as in the Viber group as well as in the Facebook group. Another reminder for those who are old timers here, 50 OLETE certificates will entitle to one voucher for free RO Hoson telemedical consultation like the one shown below. Another request that I'd like to make is that those who are not take, planning to take the OLETE, because in that OLETE I ask for feedback to my pep talk. If you're not going to take it, I won't force you, but please type in your feedback in the chat box okay, during the open forum. Let's now have a group picture taken before we start the uh, pep talk proper. Okay, ready? Hulog na yata. I have a uh, patient empowerment program in which I like to empower the lay people or patients to take control in the management of their health. There are three courses in the pep talk. I completed the core course on October 9, 2021. From October 23, 2021 onwards, I've been tackling health disorder and health issue courses. This may take three years or longer, depending on the enthusiasm of the participants. My pep talk today is entitled National Thyroid Cancer Awareness Week 2022. The empowerment objective is for the lay people to have an understanding of the fundamentals and generalities of thyroid cancer in their health management. The contents of this uh, particular pep talk will be the following. When is the National Thyroid Cancer Awareness Week in the Philippines? What are the objectives? How do we observe the week, both you and me, what are the uh, RO Hoson specific contributions to the National Thyroid Cancer Awareness Week in the Philippines in 2022, what are the objectives, target impact, and target outcome of the week, and what are the focus contents of RO Hoson pep talk on thyroid cancer awareness for Filipinos. I will give you the outline on this later on. Then the last one will be recognition of the RO Hoson thyroid cancer survivors and sharing of experiences. When is the National Thyroid Cancer Awareness Week in the Philippines? The Philippines, through the Republic Act number 10786, which was approved on uh, May 2016, observes the National Thyroid Cancer Awareness Week every fourth week of September. So we are now on the fourth week. So this week we're celebrating the National Thyroid Cancer Awareness Week. 
what are the objectives as stated in the act to ensure a meaningful observance of the week, a comprehensive public education and awareness program shall be undertaken to discuss the causes, the consequences, diagnosis, treatments, and prevention of thyroid cancer. So these are the objectives. But how do we observe the week? First, you, you, the lay people, okay? So you make an effort to know the causes, consequences, diagnosis, treatments, and prevention of thyroid cancer. You, you can do this by reading, attend lectures and talks provided by DOH and other agencies, and also my particular RO Hoson pep talk. And then after, aside from reading, aside from making efforts to know, to educate yourself, you examine your body for a possible thyroid cancer. So this week, you examine your body for a possible thyroid cancer. <clears throat> Do a self-examination of your thyroid gland and then consult a physician if you want to ask the help of a physician, ask him to have a check of your thyroid gland or if you have symptoms of thyroid disorder. So have a consultation with a physician. <clears throat> if you do all this listed down here, you are empowering yourself. You are contributing to the goal of the Awareness Week which is to lessen the number of Filipinos suffering and dying from thyroid cancer. How about me? So what are my specific contributions to the National Cancer Thyroid Cancer Awareness Week in the Philippines? So this is my contribution, the R.O. Hoson pep talk on thyroid cancer awareness. Okay, this is part of the patient empowerment program as well as Education for Health Development in the Philippines program. I will align my pep talk with the objectives of the national or the Philippine program. However, I will try to make my pep talk down to earth, meaning I'll make it as reasonable, simple, practical, cost-effective, cost-efficient, etc. Hopefully, to better achieve the impact of national programs in the Philippines. I will target at least 10 Filipinos who will pass the R.O. Hoson Osil Olete on thyroid cancer awareness. At least 10. That will be a realistic target. So this will serve as one of my key performance indicators of my contribution. So my request is please take and pass the Olete. The objectives of my talk will be uh, the following, to create awareness among Filipinos on thyroid cancer, one for those who are not, still not uh, aware, and then to create more awareness for those who have some knowledge already on thyroid cancer. So at least awareness on the following as stated in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the act, in the Republic Act, okay. The following, causes, consequences, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of thyroid cancer. So this awareness will be measured by my OLETE, Online Learning Com Evaluation Test Exercise. So please take the OLETE and help me achieve my objectives. The targeted impact of my talk will be the following, through education and patient empowerment, I will try to lessen the number of people of Filipinos dying and suffering from thyroid cancer because of late consult and diagnosis and treatment. So I will try to promote through my pep talk early diagnosis and treatment of thyroid cancer. The uh, impact cannot be to save all. Mas maganda sana to save all, pero I don't think it's, it's realistic. So it cannot be also to prevent death in all Filipinos patients with thyroid cancer. And it's also unrealistic to prevent suffering in all. As I said, this is unrealistic. It cannot be 
So the best would be to lessen the number, okay, which is more reasonable and realistic. So the realistic and reasonable strategy is to promote early consult and early treatment to lessen the number of death and sufferings among Filipinos patients with thyroid cancer. I have to confess that I will not be able to measure the impact of my pep talk today adequately as it takes a long time to see the impact, usually years, years, considering that uh, the uh, prognosis of the, uh, the course of thyroid cancer is very, very long in terms of years. Okay. What I can just do are the following to count the number of my Olete pastors who hopefully practice what they learn in terms of early recognition, consult, and treatment, and of course, count and review my thyroid cancer survivors, those whom I have treated. Now to the targeted outcome. The previous one was on the impact, but this one will be on the outcome. This is more specific now. So my realistic target at the moment will be at least 10 Filipinos are empowered based on the Olete results. So please take the Olete and help me achieve my targeted outcome. The uh, focus contents of this RO Hoson pep talk on thyroid cancer awareness for Filipinos will be the following. What is, uh, where is the thyroid gland? What is thyroid cancer? What are the causes of thyroid cancer? What are the ways to prevent thyroid cancer, if any? Where to suspect or when to suspect one may have thyroid cancer? How to self-screen and how to do self-examination of the thyroid gland? What are the consequences of thyroid cancers if not diagnosed and treated early? What are cost-effective diagnostic tests that are usually being done for thyroid cancer? And what are the usual treatment? And what is the prognosis after treatment for majority of thyroid cancers and especially with early treatment? So let's start with the first topic. Where is the thyroid gland? The thyroid gland is located at the front and on the central neck, middle part of the neck. Normally, the thyroid gland is not palpable or barely palpable. If you cannot palpate something in that central neck, something unusual, something bulging, then you can say that your thyroid gland is normal. Okay. But if you feel something unusual, it may mean that the thyroid gland is enlarged or there are nodules. So it, it could be abnormal. So what is thyroid cancer? Thyroid cancer, simply speaking, is just cancer originating in the thyroid gland. In the Philippines, these are the three most common types, papillary carcinoma, the most common, follicular carcinoma, and anaplastic carcinoma, which is the least common among the three. There are more, but these are just the, the three that are commonly seen in the Philippines. What are the causes and ways to prevent? So except for people with excessive exposure to radiation on the neck, <clears throat> x-ray radiation to the neck okay, during diagnostic tests, but not <clears throat> and also during the uh, yung mga explosion of nuclear weapons or nuclear plants, Okay. in Japan, in, uh, in Russia before, okay? So except for, this, except for this, the cause is usually not known. It could be genetic, but we don't know the exact cause. Okay. So anybody can have thyroid cancer with the exact cause not being established. It just appears. So when somebody asks me what's the cause, aside from not having excessive exposure to the radiation, I'll just say, I don't really know, sorry, okay? So again, except for avoiding excessive radiation exposure to the neck, there is no other known way of prevention. Because if you want to prevent something, you have to know the cause. But at the moment, there's, we don't know the exact cause of majority of thyroid cancer. So there is really no way of preventing. When to suspect that one may have thyroid cancer? 
The starting point in suspecting thyroid cancer is the palpation of a mass on the front central neck where the thyroid gland is located. So the mass may not be visible yet, but they are palpable already. So, but it can also be visible like this. Okay. So it can be of any size and of any number, okay, whether single or multiple. So if you have something there on the front, on the uh, central neck, okay, to, to say that it is thyroid in origin, so make sure that the mass or masses, if you feel more than one mass, move with swallowing. If it moves with swallowing or they move with swallowing like this, okay, before swallowing, it's, it's located here. But after swallowing, it moves its direction a little upwards. Okay, But this is by inspection. But you can feel the movement also when you palpate it. Okay, So if you have nodules here palpated, make sure that it moves with swallowing. Then if it, they move with swallowing, then most likely they are thyroid in origin. I said the starting point is that uh, there's a mass there because once you have a mass, actually in any parts of the body, not only in th the thyroid gland, you have to consider cancer. Okay, The mass can either be cancer, not cancer. Okay, So we have to do further evaluation to, to, make, to, to check whether that particular mass is cancer or not cancer. So... You don't suspect a thyroid cancer if there is no palpable mass, okay? So a thyroid mass seen on ultrasound and other imaging studies can also prompt a suspicion of thyroid cancer, okay? So a starting point there is really a mass. So palpate your neck regularly at least once a month. If there is no palpable mass on the thyroid gland, then don't worry about thyroid cancer anymore. Okay. So how to self-screen for thyroid cancer? My personal recommendation is to do neck and thyroid self-examination monthly starting at age 18 and onwards. Usually cancer, thyroid cancer, especially the papillary ones and the follicular ones, they usually start at a young age also. Not unlike other cancers, they usually start late in the uh, in the life of a patient, of a person. Okay. So if a mass is felt on the thyroid gland, consult a physician right away. So this is how we do a self-examination of the thyroid gland. So I stand in front of a mirror, have a one glass of water ready for you to drink so that you can uh, make your you can swallow it and then make your trachea moves out and up and down okay so to determine whether you have a thyroid mass or not okay then palpate your neck okay, as illustrated use your fingers okay usually one hand will be enough but if you can use you can also use two hands okay so palpate your thyroid gland as you swallow the, the water. So the, the swallowing of water will facilitate the evaluation or assessment of the mass that you might be able to feel on your thyroid gland. So if you don't feel anything by inspection and by palpation, especially by palpation, palpation is more accurate, then, then you don't, don't worry about thyroid cancer. So possible findings on self-examination of the thyroid gland, you can have enlargement. It, it is, this outlines the original size. Then if there is enlargement, mas malaki, okay? Or there are nodules, whether single or multiple. So these are the uh, three findings that you may have on pulp, self palpation of the, or self-examination of the thyroid gland, usually by palpation. So if you have this one, enlargement, usually it's not, you don't have, you don't suspect thyroid cancer. It's more of a hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. Okay, you're not talking about cancer. 
you talk about cancer only, as I said, the starting point of suspecting cancer is a mass. So if you have a mass here, then you suspect cancer. Okay, but if there is no palpable mass on the thyroid gland, so when you palpate your neck, okay, don't worry about thyroid cancer. If the thyroid nodule or nodules or masses or masses is or are palpated, if you palpate all these things, then cancer is a possibility. These have to be evaluated further. So to evaluate further, if you feel a lump okay, or nodule on the thyroid gland, okay, check whether the lumps are hard in consistency. Kung matigas, you suspect cancer. Okay, that's the, that's one of the Q4 cancer, malignancy. If it's fixed, di siya gumagalaw when you swallow, okay, then you also suspect thyroid cancer. Especially if any one of these is present no, and then accompanied by if there is persistent and progressive hoarseness of voice, paos palagi yung boses mo, and then you have a thyroid mass there, no, then you think of thyroid cancer. Another possible cue for uh, another cue for thyroid cancer would be if you palpated a lump on the side of the neck, okay, which could be a lymph node aside from the one on the neck on the thyroid gland, then you suspect thyroid cancer. Again, if you have a distant mass, yung mass na, when you say distant, malayo dun sa leeg, no? nasa, nas, usually nasa scalp or any parts of the body, no? outside the neck, then which could suggest a, a spread spread the situation, okay, and then you suspect thyroid cancer. I will make some illustrations on this. Here, so just by looking, even without palpating, you can imagine that this, this mass is hard, okay, and also fixed. So once you have a hard mass and fixed mass, then you suspect thyroid cancer. So if you have such a situation, more than 90 to even 99%, it's already thyroid cancer just by looking. Another one, okay, just by looking at the mass, you can imagine it's uh, fixed, okay, okay, but of course you have to palpate it, but just uh, we, just by looking, okay, you have, you have already uh, skin changes, meaning that it's uh, fixed to the overlying skin. No? So just by uh, just looking at this one, you suspect already thyroid cancer. Okay. This one is, uh, you have a thyroid lump, now in here in the central neck, and then you have another lump here, which could be a lymph nodes. And then you also suspect a thyroid cancer. Suspect, palang, huh? It's not. It's not. It's, it's not uh, proven to be a cancer yet, but you have to suspect thyroid cancer. Another one, if you have distant mass, as I said, distant mass, malayo sa neck, no, but you have thyroid mass here plus a distant mass. Kung iko connect mo dalawa, it, this could be a spread. From here, it goes there, okay? So as we know, the behavior of thyroid can of cancer in general is that it can spread to other parts of the body. Okay. So in the absence of cues of malignancy, kung wala yung cues na hard consistency, fixation, no persistent hoarseness of voice, no lymph nodes on the side of the neck, and no distant mass, then most likely it's not cancer, it's benign. So fortunately, majority of thyroid nodules are benign, as high as 80 to 90% are benign. Okay. What are the consequences of thyroid cancers? So what will happen if you let it alone there? So it can, it can have continuous growth and then it could invade the surrounding tissues. That's why we talk about hoarseness of voice and then sometimes suffocation. Okay, cannot eat, cannot uh, swallow anymore. Okay, then spread to the lymph nodes on the neck and also to the distant organs, and eventually it can cause death. So this is an example of a thyroid nodule which was left untreated, no, unattended. So it grows bigger and bigger, okay, to that size. Okay, multiple nodules, most likely the neck nodes are involved here already. Okay. And then, as, as I said, there are three types of uh, thyroid, 
three common types of thyroid cancer, papillary, follicular, anaplastic. Okay. So papillary thyroid cancers have a behavior that in that in, in that uh, it usually spread via the lymph channels, okay. Okay. lymph nodes on the neck. When you have lymph nodes on the neck and then you have a mass on the uh, thyroid gland, most likely it's papillary thyroid cancer. Now, follicular thyroid cancers usually spread by the, uh, via the bloodstream. Okay. If you see a patient like the one that I show you earlier, the one on the scalp, okay, on the head part, there's a mass there, then most likely it's follicular cancer. So the most common site of this nut spread or metastasis will be on the bones and on the lungs. The third type, which is uh, fortunately this is not so common, okay. So it's called anaplastic thyroid cancer. It usually occurs in the elderly patient, and usually it causes suffocation as soon as early as the, in a short period of time. Malaking malaki na, mabilis ang growth, and then it will cause. Uh, difficulty of breathing and also difficulty on eating. So this is usually uh, recognized as anaplastic carcinoma. Okay. So the lesson here is that uh, early recognition, diagnosis, and treatment of, are of prime importance to avoid suffering and death from thyroid cancer. Okay, so we want to when you have such a situation, we don't like it to progress to such a, to, to such a, yes, a picture like this, a person suffering. And also like if it if you saw a mass like this already, have it treated right away. Okay. What are the cost-effective diagnostic tests that are usually being done for thyroid cancer suspect after physical examination? So usually the procedure is to do the palpation first before doing tests, not the other way around, okay? So the usual uh, cost-effective diagnostic tests are the following, ultrasound of the neck and thyroid gland and also needle biopsy. Now, here is a note that tells you that thyroid function tests in terms of T FT3, FT4, TSH, are not diagnostic for thyroid cancers, but these are commonly be da being done, okay? So take note of that. So you may not need that because if you do it routinely in patients uh, suspected for thyroid cancer, you're just wasting your resources, okay? So what is uh, what are usually being done for patients with suspected thyroid cancer will be ultrasound and needle biopsy. Okay, this can be done first, usually done first, and then needle biopsy, or if the mass is very obvious, then you can do the needle biopsy first, or just to do the needle biopsy before the ultrasound, okay? So this, uh, this just shows how ultrasound is being done, okay? So ultrasound of the thyroid gland is being done left and right nowadays, okay? So the, the things that I won't go into the details, okay, how to uh, interpret it, just want to tell you that be wary of the readings because if the, uh, there is a new reading system which becomes, which becomes very, very complicated. And then there are a lot of alarming reports coming out with that new reading system. Okay? So make sure to have a thyroid clinician specialist interpret the results for you. Okay? Don't just take the readings of the ultrasonographer as is. It has to be correlated with the clinical findings. Needle biopsy, this is how it's being done. Just a, uh, a syringe and then a needle here, hypodermic needle, just uh, poke in the needle into the mass and then aspirate it and then get some samples here. Okay, if it's solid mass, you can get cells to, to be examined. If it's sometimes it contains fluid, then you get fluid, okay? What are the usual treatment? Surgery is the primary treatment for thyroid cancer, whatever it is, follicular, papillary, anaplastic. Anaplastic, usually, umahabul mo pa. Kung if it's too big na, surgery might not be able to be done anymore. Okay? But for papillary, follicular, usually in the earlier stages, kung di pa talagang malaking-malaki, then surgery is still the saving grace. 
So the surgery may be subtotal or total thyroidectomy, meaning remo removal of the whole thyroid gland with or without neck dissection of the lymph nodes, depending on the extent of the cancer. If there are lymph nodes present that has spread from the thyroid gland, then a neck node dissection will have to be done. After surgery, the uh, physician will decide whether you need additional radioactive iodine treatment. Okay. And then, for, especially for anaplastic carcinoma, in which, uh, as I said, when, when the thyroid mass uh, cancer is not operable already in the late stages, then some would, still, some would just give radiation just to palliate, just to palliate. But usually it ends up uh, futile also. So, so the best way to cut the, uh, the thyroid cancer is to do surgery as soon as possible. What is the prognosis after treatment for majority of thyroid cancer and with early treatment? Okay. So it depends on the type. As I said, there are three types, papillary, follicular, and anaplastic. This, is, this has a worse prognosis. Okay. Fortunately, it's not as common. And because you can see here that the five-year survival rate is only 7%, okay? whereas the uh, five-year survival rate of papillary and follicular cancer, it can be as high as 97 or even 99%. Okay? So this one has the best prognosis, and it's the most common, fortunately. Okay? So for fo follicular cancer, although this is the second most common, but usually you know, survival rate will be approaching that of the papillary thyroid cancer, usually in the vicinity of 90, 98, 99%. Okay. So go for early recognition, diagnosis, surgical treatment of thyroid cancer to have a better chance for cure and to avoid unwanted suffering and death. I'll now go to the R.O. Hoson Registry of Thyroid Cancer Survivors, and I'd like to recognize them. So to better convince you of the importance of early recognition, diagnosis, and surgical treatment, and of course, to inspire you, I will now present to you my Registry of Thyroid Cancers, whom I have treated from 1982 up to the present. That's about 40 years. Okay. The criterion for inclusion in this registry will be those with at least 10 years in remission after a thyroid cancer. I would have to say that this is just a partial list because I just got this uh, registry as they come in, as they come back, as they come in for follow up after 10 years. Okay, a lot of these uh, thyroid cancer patients that I operated before, I cannot remember how many already. Probably 50. 100, I don't know, okay? So I, I, usually I lost them to follow up. They don't follow up anymore. So, so this one is just a collection of those who came back to me after the operation. So, so far as of today, I have 25 thyroid cancer survival, survivors in the registry. This can be seen in these two websites, the detailed information that is seen there. So the range of remission, meaning those practically uh, practically cured neto, ano? okay? Range of remission is from 10 years to 40, 40 years. As I said, uh, the lower limit of follow-up would be 10 years. If they are 10 years in remission, they're included into the thyroid cancer survivors. Okay. So 11 has 31 to 40 years in remission. As I said, with 31 to 40 years, practically cured na yan. Okay. So 5 has 21 to 30 years in remission, and 9 has 11 to 20 years in remission. I have only one documented to have died of recurrence out of that probably 50. No? Okay. So this, this is just the, reg the registry only contains 25. Just, just double it, 50, let's say 50 cancer patients that I had in the past. Okay. So only one has been documented to die of recurrence of thyroid cancer. This is under my, uh, under my experience. But she was able to live for about 12 years after the operation. Then there was a recurrence. 
So this is a list of all the patients. I want to uh, read them one by one anymore that you can see 40 years in remission, 35, 35, 34, okay. 31 years. Okay. And then the other list is that, uh, okay, from 11, 10, 16, 17, up to 29 years. So Ida, I thought Ida has is 34 years in remission as of today. Letty, Letty, 31 years. Bell, 34 years in remission. And then uh, Virgie, 34 years in remission. Nalida, 29 years in remission. And then uh, Ramona, 21 years in remission. Marjorie, 19 years in remission. And then Alicia, 19 years in remission. Nancy, 17 years in remission. And uh, Leonie, 33 years in remission. Okay. So after recognizing all those uh, cancer patients, I hope I have convinced you of the importance of early diagnosis and treatment. So let me uh, conclude this by giving a summary and take away. So I've discussed all of these topics here. I want to read them anymore one by one. And then uh, I have also discussed the following specific uh, topics on the thyroid gland itself, thyroid cancer itself. Okay. So take away in relation to patient empowerment, knowledge is power, it gives power. Use the four case of patient empowerment, kaalaman, kapayanan, karapatan, and kapangyarihan to gain greater control over decisions in the medical management of oneself by knowing the fundamentals and generalities of thyroid cancer in their health management. So with that, I end my pep talk today. I hope I have empowered you to have a better understanding of the fundamentals and generalities of thyroid cancer in your health management. And I hope that I have convinced you to have early recognition, early diagnosis, and early treatment if you got a thyroid cancer, okay? which we don't know when you're going to have it. Sana wala. Okay? Okay. So take the uh, olete to have a mastery of learning. Okay? As I said, my uh, key performance indicators for this particular talk would be 10 olete passers. I hope I can get 10, at least 10 passers. And then 50 OLETE certificates when it's entitled one to voucher for our OHOSON telemedical consultation. And then again, the request is that you type in your feedback in the chat box. Let's now have a group picture taking before we start the Q&A in, and interactions. Okay, so let's have a group picture, one, so. ready, one, two, one, two, may pahabol, showing their pictures, okay, last call, one, may pahabol pa, one, Okay, Raul, say Pahabol. Sino pa? Pahabol. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so... The floor is now open for anything, questions, uh, interactions, as well as free consultations, but a short consultations for the rent. No? Okay. So we still I have, have about question. 20 minutes. I have a question. Okay, Susan. Susan. Go ahead, Susan. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Uh, I had uh, thyroidectomy in 1998. It was papillary calcinoma. And after that, uh, I had uh, radioactive REI. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, since then, until now, 
uh, it appears I was in remission. But I had to see an endocrinologist regularly. Well, I mean, uh, seeing the endocrinologist for quite uh, some time. But starting two years ago, I saw a new endocrinologist. I noticed, I noticed, Doc, that you said that an T3, T4, something like that, no, in your lecture, uh, it's not necessarily useful. Uh, why is that so? It's not entirely what? Not necessarily useful, T3, T4, ah. or if I, did I uh, get it right? Because I always, every time I see my endocrinologist, I have to show him the result of my T3, T4, TS8, something like that. Now, I'm gonna see him again this October, and he added in the, in the exam um, a neck ultrasound. Okay, so are if you- If I were to choose, if I were to choose, yes. If I were to choose, do I forego the D3, T4, TS8? Are you taking medications? I suppose you're taking medications. Yes, you said it's for life. Yeah, it's- Levotiroxine? Uh, I Levo yeah. Okay. Tidin, or oh, well, that's brand name, I suppose. Yeah. Tidin is like Tidin, 100 milligrams every morning. How long have you been taking that? Uh, since, I uh, know. Same dose? Since, excuse me? Same dose, same, same dose age? Yes, 100. For one year, two years? More than two years. Okay. Okay, so ganon yon, huh? Okay, so so you caught a, a segment of my lecture that I mentioned. It's not uh, indicated for patients with thyroid cancer. No, the context is like this. No, once you you have a patient, this is uh, the situation is that you have not yet been treated. Okay, you have been uh, you suspect something there. Okay, so if it's uh, if the doctor suspect thyroid cancer, usually you don't have to do the test because thyroid cancer does not produce a uh, hypo or hyperthyroidism. But if you are suspecting something else, not thyroid cancer, but hypo or hypothyroidism, hyper or hypo, then that's the time you take the test. Because as, uh, as the name implies, thyroid function test, it tries to determine the function of your thyroid gland, okay? Okay. When you say function, it's in terms of hyper or hypothyroidism. But if you have a nodules, you're talking about whether it's cancer or not cancer. So usually when you have a nodules, whether it's cancer or not cancer, usually the, the, the uh, thyroid function test is normal, new thyroid. That's why I said it's not really not, not necessary. It's not necessary because it's just waste of resources. No? But if you have been treated, with total thyroidectomy and RAI, now, and then you're being given uh, levothyroxine, thiodine, sometimes the uh, doctors would make a, a, a monitoring of the level of your thyroid gland. Kasi natanggal na eh, di ba? Natanggal na, and to check whether uh, the dosage that, would, that is being given to you is enough, or pwede nang bawasan, no? Ganon, no? Okay. So the thyroid function test that you're taking right now is after the treatment. No? So you really need the thyroid levothyroxine. Okay? Because uh, kung wala kang levothyroxine, you end up with hypothyroidism. Kasi tinanggal na buong thyroid mo at sinunog pa ng RAI. So you need a replacement. No? Okay. So the thyroid Medications that are being given to patients after thyroid surgery for cancer have two purposes. One is as a replacement, kasi tinanggal na lahat, you have to have uh, thyroid hormones. And then the other one, at times uh, the doctors will use it to suppress, to make to, parang to make it uh, an attempt to prevent a recurrence. Okay? So that's, there are two different purposes for the thyroid hormones. That's why you have some monitoring of your, of your thyroid function test. No? So you, you, I, guess, I guess don't stop it right away. Just ask your doctors na lang 
So what do you, what do you think uh, are what I mean what purposes are you uh, uh, are, are the thyroid hormones being given to me? If it's for suppression or is it for just for replacement? No? Okay. What if it is stopped? What's gonna happen to me if it's if it is stopped? Stop it? And I don't have a thyroid gland anymore. Hypothyroid can now. Hypothyroid can now. Hypothyroid, will it affect my heart? Your whole body will be affected. Not In only what way? Heart. You'll be uh, parang may, sl may slow movement because the uh, thyroid hormones control the metabolism of our body. No? If you have no thyroid hormones, then your metabolism will slow down and everything will just follow. No? Okay? Thank you, Doc. You're welcome. So as your doctors, do not just uh, no, do not uh, misinterpret my my teaching. Huh? Okay. As your doctors first, no? Huh? Okay. So you are a cancer survivor, huh? Yeah, I'm a cancer so I mean after 1998 and I'm still I'm when still alive. You, so I mean yeah, see. Okay, that's an example of uh, no of a uh, good prognosis for patients with thyroid cancer. How old were you then? When 1998? Uh, I must be nine, line of three. Thirty something lang, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, usually, maganda yung prognosis ng mga bata when they get operated on. No, that's why I'm asking. No, okay. No, yeah, doc. But the the operation had a little side effect, and the doctor told me, um, my voice will be a little few decibels lower, which is really true. <laughs> I, I used to have uh, well a nice voice. <laughs> I could sing well, but after that, uh, I think it was a six-hour operation. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is uh, a six-hour operation. Wow! And then to be told by the doctor that there is a good news and a bad news. <laughs> the bad news is that I had thyroid papillary carcinoma. The good news is that. Uh, it is not that fatal. I will live longer, <laughs> which is true. Because you said, uh, okay, as you okay. said in your lecture, yes. Okay. So, lot of operations may possible side effects. That's a small price to pay lang naman. Okay. So, at least in the oh. that total invoice is more. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you, Doc. Congratulations. You're a cancer survivor. Okay. So, any more questions? Anything in the chat box? There is none. Okay. Anybody else who want to share experience? What is the difference between hyper and hypo hypothyroidism? Hypothyroidism. Yeah, from Medlingo. So, ganun yun. Yung sa hyper, mas ma sobrang dami. Hyper. Hypo, sobrang konti. Okay. So, when you say hyperthyroidism, the uh, thyroid hormones is secreting more than the usual, the normal level of amount of thyroid hormones, they are hyper. No? Then if it's uh, lower than the normal amount of thyroid hormones in which, which should be secreted by the thyroid gland, then you call that hypo. Kulang naman. Kulang. No? Okay? Okay? Hyper and hypo. Okay. Ano yung doc effect sa ano? Sa... Daily living, pag hyper or hypo? Hyper, so just equate it simple, uh, just uh, parang simple equation oh, of metabolism. So, tataas uh, yung hyper metabolism mo, so yung heart rate mo, tataas, then papawisan, papawisan, no? Okay, papayat ka na papayat, no? Okay. So, hypo mm -hmm. naman, uh, medyo palagi kang pagod, palaging magbagal ang kilos mo, no? So, yung mga ganon. Tataba, Doc, yun. Tataba. Tataba. Okay. Hypo. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Any more? Yeah, may I ask, uh, when you're doing thyroidectomy, you're uh, suggesting patients to do subtotal and total thyroidectomy. What is the difference between the two? Why do you suggest subtotal? The other you suggest total thyroidectomy. 
I'm not, it's not suggesting, it's uh, take, giving them the options, no? Mm -hmm. Whether total or subtotal. When you say total, tanggal lahat yung thyroid gland mo. Yung thyroid gland mo, di ba, may two lobes, may two big lobes, mm -hmm. right and left. So pag tinanggal mo yung dalawang big lobes, you call that total, no? Then subtotal means more than and less than the total. No? It's either one side or one and one half on the other side. No? Okay, so yan ang subtotal. No? Now, uh, the indications for such an operation of, of the operation will be depending on the extent. Kung yung thyroid cancer mo is involving the two lobes, in right and left na lobes mo, then you you are forced to do a total already. Okay. Now, if it's just confined to one lobe, one lobe lang, kamalit lang, you may do a subtotal. Sub okay. lang, no? okay. But in the moment, magulo yung uh, literature, yung mga, ano, kahit na malit lang, pinapatanggal nila yung buong thyroid gland total. Mm -hmm. no? Okay. So may, mga, may controversy pa dyan, mga discussions. No? Okay. Some would say, but Pwede ng conservative na to, subtotal lang for small lesion confined to one lobe, no? Pwede na. Some would say, tanggalin na lang lahat para, para wala nang umulit dun sa kabila, no? And on. Okay. And then, they, some would also give RAI to, uh, to treat the patients after the operation para masunog lang lahat, no? Okay. Now, the... Uh, the significance of the uh, these two will be mas ma mas mataas ang complication rate ng total thyroidectomy, okay? Practically in terms of hypo hypocalcemia, kasi madadali yung hypoparathyroid mo, na malilit lang yon, na so there are parathyroids at the back of the thyroid gland. Kung dalawa ang ginalaw mo, so mayayari lahat, na mat mat ma 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 mapasama yung sa sa pagtanggal, na Compared to one side lang, may may iwan pang dalawang parathyroid on the other side. No? So, yan ang pinaka-crucial difference between the two. No? Okay? Of course, when you do subtotal thyroidectomy, you don't need replacement. Okay? okay? Kasi may meron ka pang adequate amount of thyroid gland left behind that will secrete normal amount of thyroid hormones. Pero kung total thyroidectomy, practically zero thyroid hormones na iproproduce mo, so you need a replacement. Lifetime replacement na yun. Okay? Okay. Got it. Um, there is a question from Rona Magpok. Hi po, Doc. Malaki po ba possibility of thyroid cancer recurrence? Ano po ang percentages? Thyroid cancer recurrence? Uh, the percentage. Number one, depends on the type, no? Okay. Papillary, follicular, and... Let's just talk about papillary, follicular na lang. Na? Okay. So, ang, whether papillary, follicular, you use the word possibility, di ba? So, anything is possible, no? Okay. So, if there's always a possibility of thyroid recurrence. Whether the recurrence could be on the uh, local, do sa, sa gitna, central neck, or kung uh, papillary yan, baka may mag-recur doon sa side, in sa neck node, no? Kung, uh, kung follicular naman siya, pwedeng mag-recur doon sa distant, no? In sa ma ma malayo, no? Kasi it, yung follicular cancer they usually spread through the bloodstream na so kung uh, kung uh, natang yung at the time of the re operation of the follicular cancer baka may maliit na nag-spread na doon sa let's say sa bone no so kahit na tinanggal mo na yung lahat na thyroid doon sa neck na so pero may may nakalabas na doon so over time baka lumabas din yon kung hindi mo ma-control with other treatment like RAI with uh, with uh, medical suppression no with imagamot no so pero usually okay ano ang percentages uh, how do i how do i answer that kasi depende sa depende sa ang daming factors you know so kung natanggal lahat by the surgeon okay 
and then kung anong uh, kung ano yung type whether it's follicular or papillary okay so as i said mas pinakamaganda yung papillary mas mababa ang recurrence no mas mataas yung follicular compared to papillary okay and then of course in terms of yung ano yung yung behavior ng cancer itself which we can never predict no okay kanya-kanya ang yan eh parang yung sinabi ko yung, yung isang pasyente na namatay after 12 years no papillary lang siya eh no okay so so but for the other patients that I have nakita niyo no maganda ang prognosis they were able to survive 34 years no so it just shows that it's cancer has its own behavior genetic behavior may kanya kanyang anyan eh, which we can never identify no? okay okay rana would you like to announce to tell your experience, share. Para ma-enlighten lahat ng tao dito. <laughs> Ay, good afternoon po. Uh -huh. Ay, ayan. Opo, ay, nagkaroon po ako ng mass dito in, ay, siguro po 2018, pero hindi ko po masyadong iniinda until lumaki po ng lumaki. And then yun pong naging parang needle biopsy po yung initial kasi nagpa-check po muna ako sa ano, neck throat po na, na specialist. And then uh, from the biopsy dun po nakita na ba, yun nga po na may malignancy. And so uh, there was the advice for surgery. Tapos dun po ako na refer po kay Doc Hoson and then uh, it was in total thyroidectomy plus radical neck dissection in 2020. Ma one month before the pa yung lockdown. <laughs> Buti mo hindi kami inabutan. Ay, one, one week. I mean, one week before the lockdown. March, March 3. Po. Maswerte tayo, no? <laughs> Opo. Kung, kung, kung nahuli pa po tayong isang linggo, inabutan na po tayo. Baka ewan ko po kung kailan na nangyari. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> So, yun po. Uh, uh, parang four days lang, three days lang po sa hospital and then yung follow-up check-ups with Dr. Hoson. So, so far, yun po uh, yung palpation dito at saka sanay. So, from the last check-up, parang wala pa naman po. Ay, wala naman. <laughs> wala. <laughs> wala. <laughs> okay. okay. So, thank you, thank you for sharing. No? So, Rana is just about three years. Three years. Okay. Okay. Yung pangarap ko po masama dun po sa listahan nyo. <laughs> yeah, you will. You will. You will. Huh? Si, uh, si Aida. Aida is not here. Aida's, Aida Antonio is already 34 years. 34 years in remission. Pareho yung sa you. No? So, may neck dissection din. May neck dissection din kay Aida. No? Okay. So you say you may neck dissection then. So I think you will. No? Okay. So there's another one from Jocelyn P. Regarding my chronic hot flashes, open close parenthesis, 10 years, does it have something to do with my thyroid glands? Hot flashes usually connotes in annoy, diba? Connotes yung, uh, estrogen deprivation, then ganon. So usually, usually hindi siya connected sa thyroid gland. Unless yung ano, very rare case, yung hyperthyroid, hyperthyroid parang met metabolism, mainitin ka, gano'n, no? Pero ka bang hyperthyroid? Kung walang hyperthyroid, most likely it's not connected, na? Okay. Okay. There's a comment from Ati Chuchi. Congratulations, Doc, for having a, for having so many survivors of thyroid cancer. Thank you. Chuchi is, is back now. <laughs> or yeah. Chuchi, you're in the States. Maybe she left now. Okay. okay. So we have not been hearing from Chuchi because uh, she went abroad now, but uh, I'm glad she's, she's back. No? Okay. So I don't know how many 
cancer survivors, yung talagang survivors actual number. Pero mahirap kasi i-follow up eh, no? Okay, hindi sila bumabalik na. No? Okay. Si Rona will be on the third year pa. Pag umabot ng 10, 7 more years, kasama na siya sa survivor list. <laughs> okay. So, any more questions? So, yung, yung iba naman, as I said, majority will be benign. No? So, some of you will have benign. No? I, I can see some uh, people here. Uh, Belet, Belet, uh, the Rosario, benign yun sa yun, di ba? MCAG. So, no problem. Delhi, benign then. No? Multiple colored adenomatous goiter, benign. Sino pa bang benign dito? Okay. Okay, Jeng de Castro, benign. So, no problem. No? Sino pa bang may thyroid dito? Oh, may okay, kaya nga, belet, di ba? Sabi sa benign sa iyo. May tatanong ka? Doc, doc ang pag-take po ba ng levothyroxine ay lifetime din kahit benign? Ah, uh, yes and no, it depends on the doctors, okay? Okay. So, yun sa akin, usually lifetime para hindi lang siya lumaki, para hindi siya umulit, no, ganun. Okay. <clears throat> Kasi pag tinanggal mo, baka umulit siya eh. O lumaki. No? Pero yung pong dose, dosage lang ang nababago. Yeah, kaya nga. Kaya, Ito kaya, po ang binigay niyo sa akin ay 200. Ngayon po ay 150 na. Yeah. I'll try to give the lowest possible dose. Kaya kumisang tinatitrate ko. No? Kaya Susan, usually kumisang tinetest ko yung ano niya. Yung T4 TSH niya. Pamisang-minsan. No? To check kung... Okay. If, if I can lower the dose already. Okay. Okay. Sino pa ba yung benign? Ay, doctor. Ah, benign ka rin, di ba? Okay. Ah, multiple colloid adenomatous goiter. Pero bakit, doctor, ano? Pag nagpakuha ko ng TSH, minsan yung ma, ma, sobr, eh, kulang yung gamot ko. Every three months ako nagpupunta sa endocrinologist. Hindi pa siya nag-normal. Bihira siyang mag-normal yung TSH. Meron akong pinost yan na uh, yung, yung mga results sa mga TSH, thyroid function test, nagka-fluctuate. Kaya kumisahan, ingat lang kayo sa readings. No? Okay. So that's why kumisahan, I have to correlate it with your yung clinical findings mo. Kung anong nararamdaman mo to say kung tama ba yun o mali. No? Ganun. No? Okay. So, Ito si Pagpo. Yeah. Pag pupunta ako sa doktor ko, doktor, eh, nakita na gano'n, binabawasan, binadagdagan yung gamot ko o kaya iniiba-iba. Minsan, yeah, lumilom ako ng hundred. Kung matagal ka na umiinom with a certain dosage, huwag ka na magpa-test, pabayaan mo na lang. Basta lowest dose na yan. No? No? Okay. Kasi kung isa, malilito ka lang din sa mga test results. Eh. Nagbabago eh. No? Nagpa-fluctuate siya. No? Okay. Palaging minsan mataas. Ah, uh, okay. Opo. So Raul, kumusta na yung thyroid nodule mo, Raul? <laughs> we have we have the Raul Lasso with us. Thank you for attending. Sino pa ba? Doc, okay naman. Uh, uh, same size and uh, hindi naman lumaki, hindi naman lumiit. Same. Okay, good. Maintain mo lang yung gamot mo para huwag lang lumaki. Yes, Doc. Uh, uh, minsan nawawala or parang tapos minsan nandiyan na naman siya. Uh, so, pa, pa, tapos parang galaw ng galaw. Eh. So, wala naman. Uh, yung, mga, yung mga benign ones, minsan hindi siya talagang nawawala. But uh, you just leave it there. You know? I-monitor mo lang. No? Okay. Yes, Doc. Kapa. Kasi yung iba naman, kasi inisip nila, ayaw mo wala, patanggal ko na kaya. O kaya yung mga ibang doktor din, ayaw mo wala, patanggal mo na. <laughs> okay. So, pwede pang basta sure tayo na benign. Na, then, babantayan na lang. Babantayan na lang. No? Okay. So, any more? 
310, last call. Kung wala na, we'll call it today. Thank you for attending. I hope you, ano, uh, you will take the ulete para may at least 10, ako, may 10 pastors tayo. Okay. And then the next uh, topic, next uh, next lecture will be uh, yung fruit seed, yung uh, buto ng mga prutas. Is it harmful or not? No. So that will be the next topic. No. Okay. Siningit ko lang itong thyroid kasi sabi ko nga, yung fruit seed ang ilalecture ko this week. Siningit ko lang ito because of the uh, consciousness week. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Let's call it a day. So, Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Doc. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Bo. Bye bye. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Sorry, late po ako. Thank you, Doc. You're welcome. I'll take it. I will take the ulete. <laughs> you will take the ulete and pass it. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh. When is when is it? Uh, when is it, Doc? Tonight? Uh, Any time, just before next Friday. I use I use okay. a on the, okay. on, the, on Friday. Because yeah, because I might forget what was uh, stored in my mind uh, an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, you think it's uh, you have the link? You have the link there. Yeah, I have a link. Okay, you take it now para fresh some ano mo, memory. Uh, I just have I just have uh, a visitor to visitors here and, uh, when they leave I'll take it. Ano yung ano yung pinapa-check up mo sa akin dati? Ah, uh, yung ano, yung dito sa breast? Ah, sa breast hindi sa thyroid. Oh, kasi oh, kasi no it's not. Uh, yung yung sa breast kasi noon, ah, uh, yung mammogram plus ano Ayun pala eh, dalawang nag-check pagkatapos kinabahan ako. Sabi ng friend kong si Norma, uh, Norma Adamos, I asked her for a referral doctor. She said, you go to Dr. Hoson, he's good. Sabi ng pagayan. So I went to see you. Okay. But I'm gonna see you again <laughs> because it, I haven't seen you for three years. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay, thanks, Doc. Okay, see you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. See you. See you.